Hi, I'm Bruce with Trick Tools. Today we want to continue our Two Bending 101 series by explaining the difference of mandrel bending versus non-mandrel bending. Um, a lot of customers call us saying they require a mandrel bend and sometimes that's the case. But oftentimes what they're doing is describing the quality of the bend they want and that can sometimes be done with or without a, a mandrel tube bender. Mandrel benders are quite an investment and um, can do a great job for, depending on what your application is. But um, it's not always required. So today we want to just explain the difference um, in those type of machines to you. So as you can see here, on these exhaust bends, this bend here is done on a conventional exhaust bender and you can see the deformation that's created in the tube done and it sort of crushes the tube in. It can accomplish a tight radius that way, but it's not as good for flowing air or, or gas or some type of liquid through the inside of a tube. This bend here was done on a mandrel tube bender and you can see that the profile remains really nice throughout the whole bend area. So this is a mandrel bend, this is not a mandrel bend, but now we have a piece of handrail here. This is a good quality bend but not a mandrel bend. So you can see that we can get the same result, but not in the same material. A mandrel bender uses an internal support for the tube called a mandrel. That's like this. Now there are several different variations of this. They can be just a plug mandrel, which just has a solid piece or it can use discs like this particular mandrel here that actually follow the tube throughout the bend area. And this is what keeps the tube from collapsing. Now this is really useful in applications where you have a thin wall thickness of tubing and a larger diameter, so the tube is prone to collapsing. This keeps that tube from being able to do that. Now, what you need is a machine like this machine right here. This is a transfluid mandrel bender. It's a German-made machine that we sell and it has a long bed on it. Now that bed has to hold a mandrel rod and the mandrel rod comes down and holds the mandrel right at the tangent point of the bend. So when we load a mandrel tube bender, you're actually sliding the tube over the top of the mandrel. The machine clamps down on it and it performs the bend and the mandrel stays right in this position while the tube is being bent. Due to the complexity and strength required of a machine like this, unfortunately, there's not a super economical way of doing it. Usually mandrel bender prices start around $40,000 on up, but the results that you can achieve with them cannot be duplicated any other way, and you can really get a premium for the work that you do with a machine like this. Um, why don't we make a bend here, and I'll show you exactly how this machine works. So as I explained, the tubing on a mandrel bender actually goes right over the top of the mandrel. So it's going to slide in. The mandrel is actually capable of moving in and out. I'm going to make sure our mandrel is all the way forward. And what it will do is it will actually extract the mandrel out in the last few degrees of the bend. So we've got our tube in place. Our mandrel is forward and it's ending right here at the tangent point of the bend. We've got uh, our wiper die adjusted here and now I'll go ahead and clamp in the tubing. Okay, we're ready to bend. Now you can see that the mandrel is being extracted out. You can open up the clamps. Pull back our bend head. And you can see the result here is very good. This is inch and a half stainless steel. It's uh, for a handrail project we're going to be building. And it's going to work out really nice for us. So you might be asking yourself, 
what are my options for building a roll cage for my race car, for my hot rod? Well, luckily there's plenty of good options. When you don't necessarily need the super tight radius that a mandrel bender can do for you, you can still get a really good quality bend on the same type of material with a non-mandrel bender. So as you can see here, the difference is the radius. This material was bent on a two and a quarter inch centerline radius. This is more like a five inch centerline radius and leaves you with a good quality bend that would give you lots of strength for a roll cage application. And that type of bend can be accomplished on a pretty economical machine. We have machines like this Pro Tools bender here that can bend that type of material and they start at around $500. So it can be a very economical uh, solution for customers doing things in their home garage or in, uh, in small run quantities. A rotary draw bender like this Pro Tools machine can give you a really good result because of the type of dies that it uses. If you look at these dies, they're machined to the exact size of the tube profile that you're wanting to bend. And that's important. So a machine like this is gonna support the tube fully on the outside. It's just not gonna give you the internal support that a mandrel bender would give you. So it's all about the relationship between the wall thickness of the tube and the diameter of the tube as to whether a mandrel bender is required or even how tight you can make that bend. As you can see, for some applications, mandrel bending can give you a real advantage that can't be accomplished any other way. Uh, but sometimes you can get by with more economical equipment and get a perfectly acceptable result. If you need any help in navigating the world of tube bending and all the different types of machines that are available, please feel free to give us a call or check out our website at tricktools.com and we'd be happy to help you help talk you through it. Thanks for watching.